So welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be talking about becoming an ODP, which is Operating Department Practitioner. Um, I went back to university when I was 25 years old, maybe a little bit less, uh, so 2008, and I was lucky enough to be accepted into my local university, which is the uh, University of Portsmouth here in Hampshire. And I'd heard about this course um, and I'd looked in the prospectus. I was thinking about doing regular adult nursing, um, and but I, when I looked through the prospectus, I was really drawn to this course. When I was doing the course, it was the DIP HE, so the Diploma in Higher Education in Operating Department Practice. Now I believe that Portsmouth are now do, offering the um, offering it as a degree, which so it's an extended couple of years um, on what I did, and I think that's probably best for most people. I was really drawn to the job from the role description and to the course because of the practical element. I'm not naturally, I don't consider myself to be naturally very clever or anything like that. Um, I did okay in my GCSEs and at college I did an advanced GMVQ in health and social care thinking that I would possibly go into nursing one day. Things, life got in the way, so eventually, so I applied to the university and I got in. So I was a mature student, so basically I, I gave them my details and my qualifications. Probably was slightly under, maybe a bit under what I needed for UCAS points. And I um, had an interview at the university and was accepted as a mature student on, um, on that. The course started in September and basically how it worked was we had... Um, a block in university so we studied basic anatomy and physiology and an introduction to becoming an um, operating department practitioner and operating department practice so we basically studied at university for about six weeks and we had um, some very basic OSCEs so if you don't know what an OSCE is it's the way that they practically examine you um, it's uh, it's an exam in a practical format um, we had some basic ones of those and then basically we were sent into placement um, which was quite daunting <laughs> um, I was sent to Southampton General Hospital and you're in theatres and you get given your first pair of scrubs um, the university usually give you your clogs um, I have my little fob watch a pen and paper and that was it and I was away um, was I underprepared? Probably. Quite a bit, really. I definitely think if you can get some anatomy and physiology either at A level or just studying before you do the course you will be set up a little bit better to, to start with with some knowledge wise as well. Um, okay so basically what is an ODP? So I know what it is but I'm going to read you the description. Okay so there's two different ways that you can work in a nursing field as an assistant as we used to call it in the operating department theatres. So in the UK we call uh, ORs operating theatres in the olden days when the students would, would watch uh, the anatomy classes it was sort of coined at the term as, as being a theatre so that's why we call them that. An operating department practitioner they are a type of healthcare provider involved with the overall planning and delivery of perioperative care. So by perioperative care, you're talking about the patient's journey through the whole of their surgery. So that can be from pre-assessment, which is when they meet um, a healthcare professional and discuss their operation, what's going to happen, how long they need to recover afterwards, and they're giving instructions uh, such as starving instructions and things like that before they have their operation. The next person they might see is an anaesthetist, if they have any... Um, health concerns prior to the operation. Next on the day um, they will be clerked into the theatre and once again they'll have basic obs of their, um, they'll have basic checks done like blood pressure, heart rate just to check that they're okay um, and the next person that they meet will be the ODP. 
there's different ways of, of working in a theatre so you can go into it through through adult nursing um, and do a course in anaesthetics or you can go the ODP route which is what I did. The perioperative journey is how the pa is the patient coming through each phase of the operation and their recovery so beginning middle and end so the beginning will be the anaesthetic so they will have their anaesthetic and then they'll be taken into the operating theatre placed on the table and at that point the surgeon and the scrub nurses will take over their care in the sense of doing the operation and at the head end will be the anaesthetist and the ODP who take care of um, making sure that they remain under anaesthesia that their vitals are checked um, any blood tests blood gases and things like that and any monitoring of their heart and lungs is is on and is monitored um, and the continuation of anaesthesia and also uh, pain relief during the intraoperative phase. Next, they once the operation's finished, the anaesthetist will give them something to wake them up and start recovering them and then we will take them into recovery and they are handed over to that team. So it's three teams in general, anaesthetic, scrub, surgery and recovery and then the recovery nurses will help wake the patient up and recover them if there's any pain they provide pain relief and um, basically recover them and give them something to eat and make sure that they're well enough to either go back to the ward if they're staying in or be discharged home so that is your perioperative process it's moved on a lot since the since the sort of 80s late 70s 80s when the role of ODA operating department assistant was initially established so it's a role that was established so the anaesthetist had an assistant over the years it has developed from a role that was largely um, learn on the job very practice based um, see one do one teach one type thing um, to being much more regulated and uh, has a lot more responsibility these days. So now we are known as operating department practitioners and there's a whole swing of that so you can work in the anaesthetic environment, the scrub environment or recovery and at the end of your successful course whichever way you choose to do it so um, the start of qualifications for ODP was probably a city and guilds uh, in the 90s and that has now moved on to university education so it's, when I did it for the diploma uh, in higher education it was two year course very very compact you have to fit pretty much what they learn in nursing in three years into two years as an ODP it's very intense so be prepared um, and at the end of your successful time at university you won't graduate the year that you qualify so I started my course in um, September 2008 and I finished my course I had some resets so August September 2010 I was offered a job um, in anaesthetics at the hospital that I trained at uh, and started in October 2010 so I started working as soon as I qualified basically but because of the type of course it is you won't graduate until probably depending on university you probably won't graduate until the following year so I graduated of July 2011 so there's a little bit of delay there but once you've successfully finished your university course you are eligible to apply for registration with the HCPC uh, which is the Health Professions Council. On day one of your course you'll get this booklet which is the Operating Department Practitioner's Standard of Proficiency and for the HCPC and there's a few other books as well and it's basically all of their rules and regulations that you have to abide by. It's very very serious, make sure you read these and take them to heart. Um, it will come up in essays and exams. Your registration is so key it's so so important I can't stress that enough so you have to conduct yourself in a uh, very professional way at all times um, or your registration could be taken away from you for a multiple uh, variety of things and that would be in a form of a fitness to practice so if they feel that you have done harm to a patient or you haven't delivered the best care or um, you've acted in a way that brings the NHS into disrepute or your profession then you would be brought before the HCPC for hearing and your fitness to practice would be questioned, possibly leading to be struck off the register. It is a privilege to be on this register and uh, something that has to be recognised and um, standards maintained at all times, so always remember that. Keep this booklet handy and it's really good to reference for essays and things like that. Okay, so when you start university, you don't need much at all. Definitely going to need your stationery, pens and paper. I guess in this generation now, probably a good laptop 
um, you're going to need books so make sure you sign up to your library and make sure you know you take advantage of NUS things that give you Amazon Prime and things like that I'll show you some of the books that were really helpful to me in a moment but the core things that you're going to need so in practice you will be in scrubs these are issued by the hospital you take them off they're supplied when you go into work you take them off and they're laundered you put a new pair on when you next go into work um, and you'll need a pair of clogs so these are theatre shoes you can't have crocs they can't have holes in um, these are leather shoes very flat very comfy for long days on your feet so be prepared and they're able to be washed and things like that um, usually so my university provided them I can't quite remember if I had to pay for those I probably did but they issue them in the first part of your course you take those with you get a fob watch to go on your uniform these days we recommend that the fob watch is in a little gel uh, silic or silicone casing for infection control purposes lots of things that people brought with them on the first day that they didn't need a stethoscope these come in handy probably around year three, I would say, if you're doing the degree now. Um, so just like adult nursing, it is very handy to have a stethoscope. Um, this one is a Littman and it's a nursing stethoscope, so it's slightly shorter. I wouldn't go for anything more expensive than that. Very, very handy for A&P, uh, listening to heart sounds, which you'll probably learn in years two to three. If you're in placement and the anaesthetist uh, is happy for you to listen to heart sounds, it really does help with your anatomy and physiology. So you can always ask um, and they'll, they're very good at teaching you, uh, but I wouldn't say that you would need this for year one. So don't worry too much. So your fob watch, definitely pens in your top pocket. One of the multi-use uh, black, red, green, blue is perfect. Always take a couple of pens because as an ODP you will need pens. Going into the hospital environment people will take your pens. Always carry lots of pens. In your top pocket is room for a little foldable notebook. Always have that because you will always be writing things down. So that's sort of how you're dressed. Now your hair will be up. must be off the face and as soon as you go into theatre uh, environment you'll be given a um, cap to wear or a hat, elastic hat. So, um, and they usually have different coloured hats to denote that you're a student so you don't get asked to do anything that you're not able to do. So that'll be given to you. Gloves, gloves are very important. You'll be wearing a lot of gloves. So normally when you're just in the anaesthetic room or in theatre as an ODP, you'll be wearing the nitrile gloves. So they're just random, they're just usual run-of-the-mill gloves, uh, they're a bluey colour um, in different sizes so you'll find your size. Um, these can be worn by anybody. When you move on to your placement for scrub, so the surgery end of the perioperative journey, so assisting the surgeon, um, the gloves used to be all latex. Now I discovered halfway through my course that I'm very very allergic to latex and ended up passing out, sorry about the phone, passing out on the floor of the operating department uh, theatre floor and that was incredibly embarrassing and I had a full anaphylactic reaction which is not very good but if you are going to have one, an operating department with uh, lots of doctors and surgeons and anaesthetists is where you want to be. So if you do have a latex allergy make sure you flag that up, there are green gloves that are latex free um, which a lot of people choose to wear in the surgery um, when they're scrubbing in as we call it um, otherwise if you're fine with latex that's probably what you'll be wearing um, so that's basically equipment makeup I wouldn't wear too much going into work um, because you will often have a mask on your face that can touch your mascara and it can fall down very very long days very hot and bothered um, I didn't wear too much even though I'm a makeup lover as you can see and a makeup artist I didn't wear too much when I was at a uh, placement Okay, so another thing that I always had with me, I would say when you're in placement for uni, get at least three or four different fol folders and binders to keep your work separate for the three disciplines. So anaesthetics, so as the ODP in anaesthetics, your job is going to be assisting the anaesthetist and helping the patient through the initial stage of their anaesthetic. So you'll be applying monitoring, so ECG, blood pressure cuff, um, possibly a pulse oximeter to look at their oxygen levels and you'll be keeping them calm and talking to them. The best bit about being ODP is that it's a real people job, you are really engaging, hands on, hands on job, you're with the patients and the most beautiful part of the job 
is that you are really helping somebody when they are at their most vulnerable. If you ask anybody out there what scares them, a lot of people will tell you going under an anaesthetic is the most scary thing they could face because it's a loss of control. You're putting your life in somebody else's hands. Now, anaesthetics is um, safer than getting in a car, really. Very, very few uh, incidents happen at all. Um, but nonetheless it's a scary thing to put your life in other people's hands and you as the ODP get to be the person that calms them down reassures them and when they wake up and it's all done and it's all happy uh, they usually look at you and give you a smile and want a hug and they're just very grateful that you were the person that helped them through it so very important job I think <laughs> So Harvard APA is how you reference your um, your books and um, create a bibliography at the end of an essay and things like that and publications. Um, it is quite hard so make sure you get it right because it can really drag, as I found out, can really drag your mark down. Um, so kind of master that in the first year if you can. Right, I don't know that there's anything else more that I can really say to you. Um, university as a mature student. Um, probably not that much different to, to being a regular student. Nobody had an issue with my age. Um, we had a lot of fun. We went out quite a bit. Um, it's definitely not like doing a regular degree, like an English degree. Um, the Everything has to be packed in so tightly. You, you can't really miss anything. Um, lectures are very long, very intense. On the plus side, a lot of the course is practical, so working on the dummy, this, um, a lot of universities, mine especially at Portsmouth, had a simulation uh, suite where they could program in the dummy was having particular problems and you talk to it and it's basically like you and a patient and that's how they obsess you for OSCEs. Um, and it's, a compu it's all computer based so the patient's uh, vital signs would be up on the monitor and they would throw in a certain scenario that was going to happen to it, the patient was going to develop anaphylaxis to the anaesthetic or something and then you react and that's how they assess you. It's quite daunting, OSCEs, but just practice, 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 try not to, to get too nervous. Um, the day to day important thing is how you are in placement. Be professional be punctual, be on time, try not to miss any days, um, be polite and um, ask questions, look interested, um, take every day as an opportunity because you might not get to go back. If you get the chance to work with somebody that really explains something well, ask if they can possibly be your mentor, uh, form a good bond with people. because. Ultimately, these are the people that you're going to be working with once you qualify, so don't burn any bridges. Um, take advantage of the teachers at the university. If you're struggling, let them know in advance. It's really difficult. I found it really hard to um, work-life balance because I was working in the bar after work, getting in at 4am, 
especially at weekends, when I probably should have been studying at the weekends, I wasn't able to. Um, so I didn't do as much study as I should have done. Um, uh, and it reflected on my grade. I wish I could have done better. Um, however, that doesn't mean that it, it didn't affect my the way I could do my job. I was a very good ODP. Um, it's a very practical job. So if you're not necessarily the most academic, it's a really good job to do great job satisfaction can't tell you how much i loved the role at all really it was just amazing from start to finish loved uni loved the teaching loved the lectures loved being a student the only thing i would say is it's not like an english degree um i didn't get to, to do much of the freshers thing i didn't get to do um join any of the societies or clubs because i was at the hospital till six o'clock at night and then i don't drive so i had to get the train home by the time i got in it was eight o'clock at night i had to do a bit of studying then it's all repeated the next day and then i was working at the weekend study when you can if you're traveling study on the train uh i used to pop post-it notes up on my cupboards in my house for blood gas uh results or um ecgs drug names operation types anything i used to put those up so whenever i saw it it would go in flashcards are amazing um just use any resource that you can there's so much on youtube now compared to when i was studying um and i guess i think maybe i might do a, a couple more videos depending how this one goes down um it's been a while obviously since i was a student but if there's anything you guys would like me to talk about or explain i'll do my best um mostly i just wanted to jump on and obviously most of my videos are about makeup and my little life and things like that um, and my career that I'm hoping to do in the near future is going to be very, very different and a, a real uh, step away from the medical field and the NHS. Um, but I will always be an ODP at heart and uh, very proud to be, actually. I'm a very proud anaesthetic practitioner. I've enjoyed every moment of my 15 years in the NHS and I've very much enjoyed my time at university. I hope you guys enjoy your course i hope you have a wonderful time and you love the job as much as i do um if you're going to portsmouth have a great time if you're going elsewhere have an absolute blast uh, make lots of friends some of the friends that i made friends with on my course are still friends now um it's a wonderful time it's a wonderful discipline to learn and it's very very rewarding career and job and uh, you can go places with it so enjoy Here's to the class of 2022, to the uh, registered ODPs of the future. Good luck, uh, enjoy, and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and uh, subscribe if you want to see some more. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Daniela underscore Logan underscore makeup. Take care. That's it from me. Bye.